welcome back girish thank you uh okay so we are we in this in this one we are going to look at some important facts about the indian rupee yes as i have already mentioned that our indian currency market is slightly different from the global currency market yes and we are going to study what is the major difference between indian currency market and the rest of it so we are going to look at the differences between yeah, differences. between the the currency market not specifically the differences the major difference between these two markets okay what makes our uh, indian currency market unique from the global currency market perfect right? perfect so the, the most important thing is that yes our indian currency which is the indian rupee right is a partially convertible currency right this is a very important term mm -hmm. which states that it is a partially convertible currency okay right so what do you mean by convertibility convertibility has two aspects to it right so the two aspects are current account and capital account so, so in simple terms if you can just explain this a little more yeah so what you are saying is indian rupee is a partially convertible, convertible currency, currency and convertibility has one current account segment and one capital, capital account, account what does it really mean so before moving forward to current account and capital account yeah just understand the term convertibility okay so convertibility basically means you have the freedom to convert one currency into another currency okay so right. what you are saying is you have a complete freedom freedom right to convert convert yeah So, for example, if you are traveling abroad, uh -huh. you need to convert your rupees into, say, dollars. Absolutely. Right. So, now the important thing is partial convertibility. Yes, we have this uh, facility to convert rupees into dollars. Right. But there is a limit to it. You cannot convert n number of rupees into dollars at your free will. Mm -hmm. For example, there is a maximum cap to it. so there's a maximum cap to the conversion that can happen yes. and that's why indian uh, rupees are partially convertible Definitely. currency but more important thing is that you need uh, the most important thing is that rbi has uh, rules and regulation on the maximum cap okay right so this whole concept of convertibility is being governed by reserve bank of india okay so what you're saying is this is then governed by the rbi Yeah. which is our central bank yes central absolutely bank. and uh, now we'll study about the current account and capital account okay so current account con uh, consist of your imports and exports mm -hmm. so for example if you are exporting something to us mm -hmm. and you get your uh, dollars okay your invoicing would be in dollars so you will be getting dollars for right. what you have sold abroad okay so you will be converting those dollars into indian rupees right? right so this means you have full freedom to convert n number of dollars into rupees okay. because it comes under the segment imports and exports okay. likewise if you want to import something from us you have the full uh, authority or uh, full freedom to convert your rupees into dollars and pay your imports so what you're saying is in in the current account mm -hmm. the convertibility is full Yes, full convertibility. So, so let's let's just let's just uh, you know state this properly. What you are saying is, in the current account, current account, which comprises of imports and exports, imports and exports. And I'll also take your example again. You are saying if there is there is an exporter, yes. let's say who exports uh, rugs to let's say the U.S. market. Yes. He needs to convert his rupees. No, no. Oh, he needs to convert the dollars no, that no, he is no, getting no, for the rugs yeah. uh, into rupees. Into rupees. So there is uh, full convertibility. So, so for example, you. So can this is full convertibility. Yes. There is there is no restriction on this. No restriction. Okay. Right. So for example, if you get ten thousand dollars or ten lakh dollars, yeah, ten million dollars, you have full convertibility to convert those into Indian rupees. Okay. Right. Same goes for your imports. So also. and and let's take the example of an importer as well. So you're saying that there's an importer, let's mm -hmm. say who Im, uh, who's importing again rugs example. Yes. So you can take an example of machinery because uh, that is an important thing. We are importing some machinery from say uh, let's Europe. Let's say let's say machinery from Europe. From Europe. Yeah. Okay. So let's say the example of machinery from Europe. We're not taking this. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that he'll he'll have to pay uh, he'll have to pay in dollars. Yeah. So, but but okay. We won't use the term pay. We'll say that he'll convert his uh, rupees, rupees into, into dollars. He'll to convert make the his payment. rupees into dollars, dollars to make the payment. To make payments, and here he is receiving payments. Yeah. He is receiving. Fine. So, what you're saying is this rupees and dollars is also fully convertible. Fully convertible. There is no restriction on 
on on this as well. In general, there is no restriction on it. So, so for the for the viewers, it's very important to understand that exports and imports comprise of the current account, okay. and there is no restriction whatsoever on the convertibility aspect. Let's just go back to a PPT and look at the second thing is your tourism employment study etc. Uh -huh. And this is slightly different because uh, there is a maximum cap to it where you can convert. But mm -hmm. again it is full convertibility. Mm -hmm. There may might be some rules and regulation from RBI right. regarding uh, convertibility but still it's a convertible currency. Okay, so what you're saying is that imports and exports is full convertibility. Yes. For tourism, employment, study, etc. Also, there is convertibility, but there are some restrictions. There are there are definitely some rules and regulation by RBI. There are rules and regulations which govern this. Yes. But overall, we can say that for current account, uh, the convertibility is uh, almost full. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Perfect. Now we move on to our capital account convertibility. Okay. Now capital account convertibility does not mean that you cannot convert your rupees into dollars or visa vis dollar into rupees mm -hmm. but the important thing is that it is under strict uh, rules and regulations by RBI. Mm -hmm. So you have a maximum cap to it wherein you can convert your rupees into dollars or other currencies. Okay, so, so I think you will have to take us through more examples on this one. The important thing which I would like to add in here is. So uh, while you understand the concept of convertibility, right. compare our currency with uh, say a fully convertible currency which is for example dollars. Mm -hmm. So we will take an example <coughs> like if you want to convert rupees into dollars you will right. definitely have some maximum cap to it. Right. Likewise if you are a resident of US right. which is a fully convertible currency, dollar is a fully convertible currency. Right. So there is no such thing as current account, capital account. So if you want to purchase a property in say Europe, hmm. apart from legal regulation, you have the full authority, you have full convertibility of dollar into Euro right. because both these currencies are fully convertible currencies. Okay. So that is the major difference between Indian rupee and your dollar or Euro because those all currencies are fully convertible currencies. Okay. So what you're saying is that let's say there is this gentleman X who resides in the US. Yes and uh, wants to buy a property in let's say uh, Paris. Paris. Paris right okay. so so he wants to buy it in France yes and what you're saying is that the option of converting from dollar to euro so yeah. let's say he's buying in euros in, in yeah. France is fully there so fully so there is no problem of uh, yeah. any okay. any kind of account that he has to look at so yes, this is fully convertible but don't get confused between uh, our convertibility of currency and other legal uh, regulation might be not uh, under the regulations of uh, Europe uh, he might not be able to buy a okay, property. Okay so I, I got what you're saying what you're trying to say is that okay uh, if, if he wants to buy in Paris there might be some other regulations yeah, that we're not legal. looking that we're not looking in in within this PPT yes but what you're saying from from a currency, currency angle it's fine because it's a fully convertible yes. between mm -hmm. dollar and euro okay okay so so wo, for what is the perspective for the Indian rupee on that? So you're saying there's a cap on conversion yeah. of rupee? Yes. Okay. For example, there is uh, definitely a maximum limit on conversion of rupee. You cannot con do a convertibility of rupee without prior permission of RBI. Okay. And what is the maximum limit? Is, is it been It is different for uh, different transactions. Okay, so th so there's a list of transactions yes, yes. Wh which is which is not which is going to come in NISM examination. Yes. Perfect. And <coughs> one more important thing is that India has a floating exchange rate with active participation of RBI. Right. The most important thing is that it has a floating exchange rate, mm -hmm. but RBI intervenes when the time is there. Right. So this is important. So what do you mean by a floating exchange rate here is that uh, for example, rupee is trading today at 45 rupees okay. per dollar. Right. Next day it would be like 45.10, 45.20 or 46. Right. It means the value of rupee right. keeps on fluctuating depending upon the demand and supply in the market. Right. So, so it this, is this, this fluctuates because of the demand and supply in the market. Yes. And, and that is why that, that, that is what you say by a floating, floating exchange rate. And uh, comparing it with a fixed exchange rate right. wherein the rupee might be pegged to a certain specific amount. So for example if I say that uh, 
on one fine day rbi says that we adopt a fixed exchange rate wherein 1 dollar would be equal to 45 indian rupees so irrespective of whatever happens in the market you have to change your dollars into rupees at at the rate of 45 only that would mean a fixed exchange rate system okay okay like uh, it, for example if you want to have a better perspective uh, during the 2008 financial crisis china had pegged it, its currency mm-hmm. so yuan was pegged and that means it was a fixed exchange rate okay so what you're saying is 2008 uh, china was following the fixed exchange rate regime yeah. but now they have liberalized it and they are maintaining a floating exchange rate system perfect so this is very important also uh, i mean we, we were discussing just before the video about the thailand crisis that had happened on on the currency yes. so that also had to do something with the convertibility options and and uh, yes one thing very important to understand here is that uh, why we are not moving towards a full convertibility of rupee okay. which is very important to understand why we have a partially convertible currencies right. why can't we have a fully convertible rupee like uh, dollar or euro okay and the most important thing is that the government is working towards it working towards uh, full convertibility of rupee right but the important thing is that as you have already mentioned about what we have learned from the Thailand uh, crisis right what happened there was like thai thai bhat was made a fully convertible currency so maybe maybe just let's just have a look at this again yeah. so what you're saying is that you're saying that thai bhat mm-hmm. uh, was a fully uh, convertible currency right so we have to look at yeah the perils of making a currency into a fully convertible currency okay so what you're saying is that perhaps this is also an indicator why india is not a fully convertible yeah. fully so convertible so maybe maybe from this example we'll be able to understand what happened yes girish for example if you convert a currency into a fully convertible currency right you are making your currency susceptible to speculative methods what i try to say is here that uh, for example we take an example of our indian stock market right, right. wherein fif fis have an active participation in the market okay so let's so, let's just look at this yeah and uh, so what you're saying is that there's an indian stock market right and uh, wherein there FIIs is there is there is active participation of fis yes right so, so whenever we talk about there is a drastic fall in indian stock markets indian right so stock markets are falling so you're saying indian stock markets when they start falling naturally the first tendency is of the fi is to take back their funds take back their funds yes so now you can correlate this thing with our indian currency market okay so for example if somebody from us is investing heavily in the indian market true which he'll do by converting his dollars into rupees right So whenever he wants to take his money back, right, he is going to convert his rupee back into dollars, right, and taking the money back, right, which will have a drastic impact on the domestic currency. Okay, so what you're basically saying is that uh, uh, FIs are investing. Yeah. If India were a fully convertible uh, currency, mm-hmm. then there's a possibility that if the Indian stocks had fallen, example, this yes. is just an example. If they had fallen, mm-hmm. they would have the option of taking back all their funds out, yes. which would have even a more cascading effect on the Indian stock markets, and yes, the stock yes. markets would fall. Some, something yes. of this sort also happened in the Thai baht that you were talking of. Yes, it was uh, prone to that speculative attack from uh, currency speculators. Then it's prone to speculative attacks. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, so what you're saying is that this is one perhaps reason why India is still not a fully convertible. Yeah, it's still not a fully convertible currency because, uh, like, it all depends upon how your central bank approaches this matter. Hmm. So it will also depend on the central bank approach. Yes. Perfect. So okay, but so the most important thing is that uh, we are moving towards a uh, fully convertible currency. So what you're saying is that India is moving towards moving towards, but still not a fully a convertible. fully convertible. So this this is going to be an ongoing debate, I'm sure, because yeah. because the perils of a fully convertible currency has just been explained by Girish and and uh, and.